This program is recorded and presented by Chippewa Valley Community Television. The audio for this program can be heard on WRFP LP 101.9 FM. Chippewa Valley Community Television presents Your Local Race. Meet the Candidates 2016. Welcome, I'm Bob Brown, the News Director of Chippewa Valley Community Television. Today we are having another in our series of interviews with candidates for five at-large seats on the Eau Claire City Council. Today we're speaking with Eric Larson. Eric's been on the council since 2013. Uh, Eric, uh, why don't we begin, maybe you can just uh, tell uh, the voters about yourself a little bit? Yeah, thank you. Um, I have lived in Eau Claire essentially my whole life, except for a few years I was away in the Navy. Uh, came back and uh, studied police work at the Technical College, worked for the police department for 28 years. And then uh, when I retired, I, uh, I felt like uh, I, didn't, I didn't miss police work too much, but I, but I did miss public service. And so um, I know that we have good people working uh, in our city administration. I'd worked with them for a number of years and uh, decided that uh, I could stay involved in our community and, and have an impact still on our community if I was uh, fortunate enough to be elected to the city council. So in spring of 2013, I ran for city council and was elected to an at-large seat. What, uh, what personal qualities do you think you bring to the council that are particularly beneficial? Well, I think I know the community very well. Uh, I know the different things that, uh, different issues that are being faced in, in various neighborhoods in the community. Uh, I know the, the staff uh, very well and uh, sort of the, uh, how to navigate through issues between the, the community and, and staff and look out for the interests of the community at large while still uh, addressing issues that are being faced in individual neighborhoods. Okay. Now, in the three years that you've been on the council, no, almost three years you've been on the council now, what, what do you see as being your biggest accomplishment? Well, I'm proud of my support for the Confluence Project. Um, we, when the referendum came up, I worked very hard to uh, educate the public on the issues related to the, to the Confluence Project. Uh, I worked on the Confluence Council Task Force to develop the governing body for the Confluence Project. Um, one of the first things I did, though, as coming on council was restructure the, the Fiscal Policy Advisory Committee to make it more accountable to the full council. There are only three council members on that, that committee, and uh, I thought it was important that the issues that they uh, look at with regard to our fiscal policy and budgetary issues uh, be accountable to the full body of the, the city council. And so I, I uh, drafted a resolution that restructured the, restructured the, the way the committee works each year. Okay. Now, as we look forward to your, uh, hopefully, your next term, uh, mm -hmm. if you get reelected, uh, what's, uh, you know, what's something that you're particularly interested in accomplishing as you move forward? Well, this year, I would like to uh, propose a, an a, uh, ad hoc committee of council members who can review our, our council handbook and uh, formalize it a little bit uh, making it into more of a policy manual that's approved by the full council and changes to that policy manual then would be uh, made by resolution of the full council. Okay. Now in your time in Eau Claire, particularly uh, serving uh, in, the, in the police department, I'm curious as to what, what do you see as the, is there a particular area or areas of city government that you have a particularly strong interest in? Whether it's... Uh, I've enjoyed my time on the, on the plan commission um, working with uh, the the uh, citizens advisory committee mm -hmm. that reviewed the our comprehensive plan and uh, made updates to it I've attended a number of local neighborhood association meetings uh, to to uh, bring them in on the on the planning process and make sure that the voices of the of the neighborhoods are heard when uh, major projects are being reviewed by the City Council and the Plan Commission. Okay. Uh, actions uh, in your term uh, on the on the c Council so far that you were particularly supportive of that uh, 
you felt really strongly about that the council didn't? Well, I do think that uh, the, the Confluence project is going to uh, help with downtown a lot. In fact, it already has. Uh, it's a major reason that Jamf decided to place their headquarters in downtown Eau Claire. Where they could have put it anywhere in the world, really. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a major reason why so much money has been invested in the Lismore and the Oxbow. Uh, and so it, it, uh, it will raise our uh, revenue by a large percentage mm -hmm. once we we get past the investment part mm -hmm. of this stage. And I think it's, it, it's fairly <laughs> obvious why uh, the, the Confluence Center might uh, bring more business in terms of the uh, the hotels. Mm -hmm. But now, wh why do you think it was important in terms of Jamf, uh, a computer software company, right. deciding to to, to uh, make this its home? A lot of people in the uh, in the work market today can work from just about anywhere. Jamf is a perf perfect example of that. They, are, they uh, offer a software product and software support all over the world, but they don't have to have brick and mortar uh, office space anywhere. They can look at the community that they, uh, they want for their employees and for themselves t to live. So things like the, the bike trails, uh, Phoenix Park, a performing arts center, a, uh, a quality uh, of life issues. Quality of life issues. Those mm -hmm. those things are what uh, major companies are looking for when they're uh, deciding where to place their. Okay. All right. Uh, so the Confluence project was something you particularly strongly supported. Uh, actions that the council have taken in the time you've been on on it that you strongly disagreed with. Well, I uh, did not support the. Uh, the plan for uh, that was brought to the city council by the sustainability committee for plastic bags. I I, I support the f the fr phase one of it where we're doing some education on the effect of plastic bags on the community or on the environment and uh, other options that are available besides plastic bags. I don't like the direction it goes when it comes to charging people a dime per bag okay. or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have any uh, suggested changes for how the you know the council the procedures that the council uh, operates under? There are ways they could be operate more efficiently or more fairly. Well, um, I don't have any major criticism of of the way the city council works, mm -hmm. uh, but I do want to go through that uh, policy manual or the, the uh, handbook at this point. And we have looked at uh, how we might change the way that resolutions are brought for before the council or ordinance changes are brought before the council. Uh, should, we, should it be just two council members or do we're looking at having study issues where the full council can have input on on an issue. We've had, we've approached uh, a couple of different topics with that. Um, so there are some some things that that maybe get changed here or there. But uh, as I said, I, I'm looking forward to having an ad hoc committee where we can get multiple voices in mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. Well, the council uh, currently and looking forward, there's some some significant uh, budget issues that are. The challenges that are that are be confronting uh, the city. Uh, how do you go about making those kinds of tough budgetary decisions? What's your focus when you're making your deliberations? Well, it's a it's a uh, a balance of priorities first off, and uh, and you know where how much money we have available to us, which right now isn't very much. There there's very little flexibility in our budget budget right now. Um, we made some significant changes when we uh, took the community enhancement funds and uh, transferred sort of control of that over to Visit Eau Claire. Um, but there, there are the other ones are sort of tweaking around the edges. But when it comes to investment in the future of our community, um, we look at things like what's going to enhance our quality of life, 
what is going to uh, help us economically um, and, and, and what is going to, in the end, raise revenue for the city of Eau Claire. And I think that our use of uh, tax incremental financing right now has helped us a great deal in those regards, especially with what's happening downtown. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there have been some concerns raised about the amount of TIF districts that have, that have been created. Mm -hmm. uh, has the city, are you seeing them reaching a point where you know, we really can't do that much longer? Well, we have a little more to do on the West Bank uh, and a, a couple of other areas in the Cannery District. Um, but when you look at the use of TIF districts across the state, we have 10, and I think four of them are closed. So uh, you look at places like Janesville, they have 30-some. Um, over on the eastern part of the state, they, they use them a lot. Mm -hmm. We've been very conservative with our use of, uh, of TIF districts, and uh, I, I'm very proud of the way uh, our city has handled that. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, the major challenge for anybody on any sort of uh, public body is balancing the economic restrictions <laughs> you're living under with what your constituents want, neighborhood, uh, neighborhood concerns. Mm -hmm. How do you go about striking that balance? Well, we, uh, I can give you an example, actually. When we, uh, one of the issues that the uh, Fiscal Policy Advisory Committee faced this last year was what, how do we manage our alleys? And really, uh, alleyways in residential neighborhoods, for the most part, have been not kept up. They don't get plowed, they haven't been maintained properly, and they're in very poor shape. So the, the committee looked at, uh, um, at that issue, visited neighborhood association meetings, talked about resolutions to that, and decided on a 10-year plan to to refurbish all of our alleys. So in the future, w once the alleys get all up to place, they'll up to snuff with what they should be, uh, they will be maintained on the same maintenance uh, schedule as the streets. They, they grade the quality of the alley. Once it uh, reaches a, a certain grade, they put it on the plan for uh, refurbishing it in the next year's street projects. In order to do that, though, we uh, we found some savings in a, in a few other areas in the budget to be able to to fund that, um, and CDBG funds might be available available for some of it. Uh, so that was a difficult project, but mm -hmm. we got input from the neighborhoods. We uh, had discussions with council members, and uh, brought it to the council, and it passed. Well, I'm sure there'll be uh, more difficult uh, projects to balance uh, right. going forward. Uh, in your hope that you're one of the people making those kinds of balancing decisions, anything else you'd like the voters to know about you as they head into the voting booth? Well, I enjoy my time on council. I can tell uh, the voters that. I've, uh, I've enjoyed the last three years. I am energized by uh, the things that we can accomplish as a community and uh, and I, I look forward to continuing my work on the City Council to, to help accomplish those goals. Okay, Eric Larson, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. And thank you for watching. Uh, I hope that you will uh, be sure to get out on Election Day, April 5th, and do your civic duty. Get informed, go out and cast uh, an informed vote. Uh, and be sure, uh, be help, you, help you get informed, you can tune into Channel 994 to uh, see all the, the uh, candidate interviews. Uh, as we go forward in, in the city council, school board, and county board elections. And on election night, tune in starting at 9 p.m. for the uh, latest uh, updates on vote totals as they come in. Thank you. This program was recorded and presented by Chippewa Valley Community Television. Chippewa Valley Community Television is made possible by continuing community support. If you would like to volunteer or make a donation, you can contact us by calling 715-839-5067 or on the web at www.cvctv.org.